Olé, olé to all football fans, soccer if you're American. This is Hellhound Engineering bringing you a down and dirty review of my AT&T fiber insulation and the BGW210. I wanted the fiber to be run into the garage or closet with an internal RNT installed. The technician said per company policy that he had to use the pre-installed equipment and he wouldn't do the install otherwise. If he would have installed an internal RNT, then I could have removed three unsightly pieces of equipment from my walls. The exterior RNT, Comcast enclosure, and Delta One battery backup with no batteries. It's not even supported by AT&T anymore. In my opinion, he was just lazy with no work ethics. The RNT is connected to a Comcast Corexor enclosure with an outdoor rated Cat 6E that was previously spliced to what appears to be an inferior non rated Cat 6E Ethernet line with no bands on the wire, substandard wiring of unknown brand at best. All internet lines intersect in the structured media enclosure located in the master bedroom closet. Seeing the mess, I cleaned it up after the tech left. The Ethernet line had already been spliced to a living room RJ45 jack. The BGW210 was placed behind the TV in the living room, and the Wi-Fi was able to reach throughout the home barely, but it worked. He verified the download and upload speed per the subscription plan and left. About six months after the install, the internet started to slow down with loading issues and freezing. I contacted AT&T support, which is like banging your head against the desk. All they can do is read a script, basically resetting the device. It works for a couple of months and then another reset and so on. I ended up paying a service charge for a tech to come and try to resolve our issues. The tech ended up replacing the BGW210 and then checked the upload and download speeds. It was now working properly. I was told if I wanted to increase performance, then I would have to go to the next tier or use Ethernet where possible. I already know that the issue is bandwidth, not speed. Bandwidth is the total number of lanes on a road and the speed is the number of vehicles on that road. Too many vehicles, and you slow down and even stop in a traffic jam. To get around this, you take the toll road, which is the Ethernet port, my analogy. My household has too many Wi-Fi devices connected, vehicles or pedestrians. I utilize three of the Ethernet ports on the modem to free up some bandwidth. The Wi-Fi does seem to work better now, but it still has some light issues, but noticeably less than before. I left on a job assignment for a couple of months and after returning home, my wife informed me that she had signed up for the one gig plan. AT&T was having a special promotion and to her it was a great deal. AT&T support told her that it will help relieve the issues of a slow internet Wi-Fi. She signed up and shortly after that, AT&T raised the rates. Go figure. Most people don't understand speed versus bandwidth, and that is how all service providers are able to lie and con individuals into a tier or a plan that is not truly needed. In my opinion, 100 to 300 is plenty for most households, and if you end up having bandwidth issues, start hardwiring as many devices as possible. Don't believe the lie. This last graph is the pros, cons, and recommendation and what I use. Recommendation is yes, mainly because of the price for Unlimited, even though AT&T requires you to use their gateway for their fiber service. I use AT&T Fiber with the BGW210 third replacement. When the one gig promotion expires, I will return to the 300 tier and replace the BGW210 
with the new BGW320. This wraps up my review and experience with AT&T. In future videos, I will be installing additional Ethernet drops using CAT6A Shielded, remodeling the master bedroom closet structured media enclosure wall, building a rack to house switches and other equipment. This video was created and edited on an iPhone. Ole ole! Time to enjoy the sunset.